Over the years on my channel, especially further back, I showed you a lot of cool electronic circuits on my channel, as well as electronics projects. So today I want to show you this homemade Geiger counter that I just put together. The Geiger counter you see here can detect alpha, beta, and gamma. Looking at this more closely, you can see there's a counter on top to count the pulses that are detected by the Geiger tube. Right here is where the audible detection is going to take place. Visual detection. Over here is your charging port. This particular circuit is driven by 12 volts, so there are three 18650 lithium ion cells in series that are charged using an external adapter. Over here, nothing on that side, and here, there's a little rock here just to prop this up so you can see it better. All right. Here we have the on off button. Over here is your power indicator, green LED, and right here is the Geiger tube. Now the Geiger tube that I used is the one you see right over here. It's fairly expensive. I was very fortunate though to find this one for only 30 bucks. It's a US Navy 5979, like I said, alpha, beta, and gamma detection tube. And this is only here to cover the mica window so it's not damaged. You see there's a mica window, slightly concave because there's a negative pressure in there and there is an inert gas such as argon, neon, or helium. And what happens, you have to put a charge on the gas in that tube in order to have the detections take place. So in this case, this tube requires minimum 680 volts applied to the anode of this tube. The outer edge all the way around is the cathode. When that gas inside this tube has that high voltage charge placed on it, when a high energy particle or gamma rays hits that tube, you'll have a detection between the anode and the cathode. If you don't have enough voltage applied to the gas inside this tube, when a high energy particle or gamma ray strikes this tube, you are not going to have any ionization take place which is not going to give you any detection. Right over here is the charger. Plug this in, take the DC jack, and this gets plugged right into the port on the opposite side that I just showed you, and it only takes about an hour, maybe two hours, to fully charge the Geiger counter. First, let me give you a demonstration showing how it counts background radiation, and then we're going to test different radioactive sources. So the counter is set at zero by pushing the reset button, one minute on the timer. I'm going to turn it on, get this going, and you'll see the clicks show up on the display. You can see the visual indication right here. This tube is usually around 45 counts per minute. Okay, so 42, that was 42 counts per minute. The first thing I'm going to test is this radioactive vacuum tube, and it has radium-226, which I believe is an alpha emitter. Let's turn this on first. It's a Western Electric 423A. You 
you see the pulse rate picked right up. See the count. And you can see it went back to normal background. Now we're going to test depleted uranium, which happens to be on this bowl right here. And you can see the rate picking up already at this distance. This is Fiesta Ware. Look at that distance, how it's detecting it. This is from the 1950s, I believe. People ate off of it. The problem is, if any of this chips and you ingest it, you know, you're radiating your, you're going to be radiating your digestive tract. Now let's take a look at a thorium mantle. Already, right from there. Starts grabbing it about five inches away. Actually, a little further. How about uranium glass beads? There is an increase. These are not really super radioactive, but you can see there's definitely an increase. And slow down. Right here is also uranium glass. Let me turn on the Geiger counter. So you can see there's definitely an increase. It's probably double background radiation. Now let's take a look at the tritium sites on this gun. It's about double background radiation. It's going to slow down now. Okay, let me open up the inside and show you what it looks like. First, let me put the protective cover that I made back on the, the Geiger tube window. And now there's just four screws. You can see that large Geiger tube in the back. I made metal clips out of copper on the cathode and over here on the anode. This board at the bottom is the pulse counting circuit that has the opto isolator along with the 555 IC. That's your charging cable that goes right over to the battery pack located underneath this board. You can see the transformer as well as the voltage multiplying circuitry and everything is bonded using special padding and E6000 adhesive. None of this stuff moves around. If I ever have to replace this battery pack 
all I have to do is just take a utility knife blade, make one cut here, and two little cuts there. Pull the board off to the side, and then the battery pack is right below. In the video description area, I'll place a link to this project box, as well as the battery pack and charger. Let me put this back together, and let's take a look at the schematic. Here's the schematic that I used for the Geiger counter, and look over here. This whole area showing two tubes, just eliminate that. I did use this for another project, so the line leaving the voltage multiplication circuit here is going to be connected straight across to the 1M or 1 meg resistor connected to the anode of the Geiger tube. Every Geiger tube is going to require a different anode resistor, so you're going to have to look up the specifications for your tube. Mine is a U.S. Navy 5979 Geiger tube for alpha, beta, and gamma detection. This is a typical Radio Shack audio transformer. You can use other ones, 8 ohm secondary, 1K ohm primary. Transistors that are shown over here tells you exactly what you can use and what you can substitute. Over here is an LM358 integrated circuit. You can use a TL072. This is a voltage reference. You don't have to use that. You can also use a 317T. Set it up as shown to give you the 1.25 volt output. This is your LM555. This is the pulse counting circuit. You can see the way it's connected to pin 3. 10 ohm resistor. You have the 47 microfarad capacitor, 25 volts, connected to your piezo buzzer to ground. And also tapped at pin 3 is my yellow LED that you saw flashing on the Geiger counter with a 470 ohm to 510 ohm resistor. Across the power rails, you're going to have a capacitor to add stability to the circuit. It's electrolytic. Right here is a potentiometer, 50K ohm. You're going to use that to adjust the voltage output of this multiplication circuit. If you're going to be using a tube that requires less voltage, then you do not need to add the extra stage right over here at the front that I added. But if you are going to be using a high voltage tube like I have, which can use up to 900 volts, you're going to have to add the extra stage. I did try using it as shown first with the 9 volt, adjusting the voltage output, could not get any pulse detections. I also tried using 12 volts with the existing stages that were set up and there was no detection. I added the additional stage in the front with 12 volts and no problem at all. I was able to achieve between 750 and 800 volts at that anode resistor right here, the one meg, connected to the Geiger tube. Right over here, point A, also is connected a PC123 opto isolator. There's a resistor, 200 or 220 ohms, going to the anode, top left corner of that four pin chip and the bottom goes to ground or battery negative. The tally counter switch you can see over here in this image where I connected the positive and negative. One of those contacts is more positive you want to make sure it goes to the collector of this floating transistor. The other wire going to the switch which is more negative goes to the emitter. Keep in mind some tally counters are going to have problems counting rapid pulses. Mine had an issue and even now at a high pulse rate I do miss a few pulses, nothing major, but the way to adjust it is right over here with this capacitor. It's a 0 .047 47 nanofarad 25 volt capacitor. You would take that value and gradually increase the value. You could try a 104 capacitor 204, even higher than that, which is 100 nanofarad, 200 nanofarad. I'm using almost 600 nanofarads, and the reason why, my tally counter was missing too many pulses, so now the pulses are wider, and the tally counter is able to catch those pulses. You don't want to make the pulses too wide. If you do that, you may miss some pulses. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, and share. Thanks for watching.